Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 20. Let's draw the shape of methane, ammonia and water. With whatever knowledge we have till now. So let's take this carbon molecule now. Carbon we know that it has uh, atomic number of 6. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Correct. So my this my will be my 1s orbital will have 2 electrons. 2s orbital will have 2 electrons and 2p orbitals will have 2 electrons. So let me put 1 each here. 1 this p orbital, 1 p orbital. Correct. Now I am saying that uh, in the excited state it will be something like this. Uh, it will be uh, 1s2, 2s1, 2p3. Right. So I will remove one electron from here and I will put somewhere here. Excited state. One electron jumped and came here. This is my excited state of carbon. Carbon. Now I am adding 3CH4. So I have to add 4 hydrogen molecules. So what I can do is I can add 1 hydrogen here, 1 hydrogen here, 1 here and 1 in this. Right. So this will be my sp overlap, this will be sp overlap, this will be sp overlap and this will be ss overlap right because both are s orbital. So this will be shape of my hydrogen molecule. That means these angle will be 90 degree. Correct. But experimentally we have seen that carbon shape is something like this, 109 degree. So we, I mean, we are doing something wrong, right? Because we knew the carbon shape is like this, carbon shape is like this, then we added as hydrogen for hydrogen. It should be 90 degree because all these orbitals are 90 degree apart. But the shape is not like this. Similarly, for let's draw for NH3. For NH3, we know that nitrogen is uh, 7 atomic number, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So let's let's put uh, 2 electrons here, 2 electrons somewhere here, and 3 electrons in 3 orbitals. Right? I have to add 3 hydrogens, so let me add 3 hydrogens here. Because I told that the unpaired uh, orbitals will overlap. So this is one paired, this one paired, this one paired, this overlap. They should get ammonia and each angle should be 90 degree because these orbitals are 90 degree apart. But experimentally we saw that NS3 angles are 107 degree. Also if you see water also, water I have oxygen, oxygen is uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So I have in 1s2, 2 molecules, two molecules here and 2p4, one, one, one I will put in all, three, one more I will put somewhere here only. So I have how many unpaired uh, orbitals, two here. So my hydrogen let's suppose uh, will come here, will join here and hydrogen will join here. <coughs> because hydrogen is having unpaired electron, right? So it, it will pair according to the current theory we have, orbital overlap theory. So the angle should be 90 degree because these are 90 degree apart orbitals, p orbitals but the experimental value is 104 degree. So there is something they are missing because with the current knowledge we have for the orbital approach, orbital overlap and the current knowledge we have for the structure of atoms which we learned in the last class, right? Carbon will be something like this, it will have uh, four uh, lone, uh, four unpaired orbitals in the excited state. So we added one uh, hydrogen each in all these four orbitals, unpaired electron, un unpaired orbitals, we get something shaped like this which should be all 90 degree but the experimental value is different. In ammonia also, we have three uh, unpaired orbitals and we add three hydrogens to this three unpaired orbitals, it should be something like this all 90 degree, right? It should be something like this because all these orbitals, p orbitals are 90 degree with each other but experimental value is something else. In case of water also, 
when we applied this uh, current knowledge we have, we found that the angle should be 90 degree for hydrogen and uh, this it should be this value but experimentally we found this value that means something we are doing wrong right so the current overlap concept is not able to explain the structure of the molecules so what should we do here comes hybridization hybridization in order to explain the shapes of these molecules Pauling introduced the concept of hybridization right according to him according to Pauling the atomic orbitals recombine to form new set of equivalent orbitals that means the oxygen here or the carbon here or the nitrogen here these molecules these atoms their orbitals will recombine to form new set of orbitals and they are called hybrid orbitals that means the orbitals of central atom generally this hybridization happens only for central atoms recombine to form hybrid orbitals and this is what hybridization says because the shape of uh, all these molecules you cannot explain without hybridization so he introduced a new concept called hybridization he is saying that the Paul the Pauling says that uh, this is the central atoms where orbitals recombine to form hybrid orbitals right and we should not use pure orbitals we should use hybrid orbitals for bond formation and with this if we, we do that we can, ex we can explain the shape properly and the formal definition of hybridization is is nothing but process of intermixing of orbitals of slightly different energies please note slightly different energies so as to redistribute their energy resulting in formation of new set of orbitals of equivalent energies for example if i have orbitals of energies 4 3 and 5 right so they'll merge 4 plus 3 is 7 plus 5 12 12 by 3 is 4 so they'll form three orbitals with energy 4 that means if they are orbitals of slightly different energy they'll recombine they'll intermix and they'll redistribute their energy and they'll form set of new set of orbitals of equivalent energies please note here it's critical point here if they are orbitals of slightly different energies they'll recombine the redistribute energy to form new set of orbitals for equivalent energies and shape shape will also be same the example is 2s 1s and 3p all are having equal energy right 2s 3p are almost similar energy they will recombine to form sp3 hybrid orbitals correct and it is not that carbon orbitals form sp3 carbon forms sometimes sp sometimes sp2 sometimes sp3 depending on the condition but the fact is the orbitals of equivalent almost similar energy can combine to form equivalent energy orbitals right for example i told the energy is 4 3 and 5 three orbitals they will combine to form again three orbitals i write once again 4 3 and 5 orbitals may combine to form again uh, three orbitals or with same energy 4 4 4 same energy and same shape this is called hybridization the features of hybridization are the first is the law of conservation of orbitals that means the number of hybrid orbitals the output is always equal to the number of input the number of or, uh, atomic orbitals hybridized. law of conservation of orbitals for example i told there are four five and three uh, different energies similar energy similar not equal they hybridize to form three different orbitals all will have same energy so if three orbitals are used here you will get three orbitals if four is used you will get four that is law of conservation of orbitals the hybridized orbitals have same shape and energy they told they will have same shape and energy energy is same and shape is also same and the hybrid orbitals are more effective in 
stable bonds. See, the whole story is all about stability, right? Decreasing your energy, decreasing your stress. So it is saying that the hybrid orbitals are more effective in forming more stable bond. And that's why right, hybridization comes into picture. And as I told that, since these guys have same shape and structure, and if you see in the Vesper also, we have, let's suppose, three balloons. It'll have four balloons, it'll have this structure. You put two balloons, it'll have this structure, linear structure, right? If you have uh, three balloons, it'll have uh, triangular planar structure. So, since all the balloons were same shape and energy, here also all these orbitals have same shape and energy, right? All these orbitals, as I told, have same shape and energy. So, that's why they'll try to, uh, uh, what do you call, get a particular shape such that they have minimum repulsion. And that's why, that's how they indicate the geometry of molecule. So it's almost similar to Vesper theory actually. There also, it talks about different balloons, right, of same shape and energy. So when you put three balloons of same shape and energy, it will be in the uh, triangular planar form. Similarly, in this case also, they're talking about uh, hybrid orbitals of same shape and energy, right? And they, they are, uh, they try to be in, in the space in such a way that they give minimum repulsion between the electron pairs and thus they have stable arrangement. So, and thus you can see the hybridization indicate that before we go further, let's understand the conditions for hybridization. The first condition is the orbitals present in the valence cells only take part in hybridization. The second condition is that the orbitals that are undergoing hybridization should have equal, almost equal energy. For example, I told four, five, or sorry, four, three, two, I two, I think. Yeah. See, they hybridize, they'll form three hybrid orbitals of same energy and same shape, but these are almost equal energy, right? The promotion of electron is not mandatory prior to hybridization, and it is not necessary that only half filled orbitals take part in hybridization. In some case, even the fulfilled orbitals also take part in hybridization. Carbon, oxygen and nitrogen tends to hybridize maximum. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, please remember these three. They tend to hybridize maximum. Terminal atoms such as hydrogen, chlorine, fluorine, they don't hybridize that much. But carbon, nitrogen and oxygen, they tend to hybridize a lot. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to Watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.